Well, thank you, David, for those kind words, and it is a great pleasure to be here today and bring you the greetings and solidarity of the 500,000 members of the BC Federation of Labour. The first thing I want to do is to thank you for the work that you do in this province. It is really, really important work. At BC Hydro, at Fortis BC, at ICBC, at Capilano University, at BCAA, in transit, in credit unions, in union offices, in car rental companies, I've probably forgotten a few places, but I think it's really important for us to recognize that workers are the true engine of the economy. And we should always remember that, and we should always celebrate that. And thank you for that work. And, of course, I want to give a special shout out uh, to the very wonderful, magical, Move Up members who work at the BC Federation of Labour. Um, I am actually, this is a little secret, in this room I am the employer, uh, <laughs> I am management, uh, but we do love our Move Up members, they keep us on track, on time, they're currently pulling out their hair preparing for a convention, uh, and we could never do anything that we do without them. So I wanted to recognize that. Thank you for being here, active in your union, representing those members, fighting for their rights, making sure they have good wages and benefits and a voice at work. And here you are at your convention making important decisions that will keep your union strong and effective in this province. And what a great union you have, I have to say. I mean, the unions in this province, they're all my children, uh, but um, you have a great union. It's what we like to call a medium-sized union. Not too big, not too small, just the right size, right? But you definitely punch above your weight in this province. You have a good, wonderful, effective presence as a union in the province. And you've taken on some tough fights. BCAA comes to mind, a terrible, long dispute, and you won that dispute and won it with great provisions uh, for the members who worked there because of your tenacity and perseverance, two qualities that, uh, you know, are the key to our success in the labor movement. And at Hastings Racetrack and Westminster Credit Union, you continue to use all kinds of innovative tools in communications and campaigns uh, to try and uh, to win those disputes and continue to fight for your members. The fact is we need every single tool we can muster and we need solidarity to win these disputes. And in that regard, I want to thank you for your support of casino workers in this province with your members who work at those casinos. They have a tentative deal, thank God. Um, but that was always a very, very, uh, that was also a very long and difficult dispute. And we can never, ever win those disputes without solidarity among unions. And the toughest kind of solidarity that we have to embrace and face is when we honor another union's picket lines. And that makes us very successful in this province. We, a picket line is a picket line in this province. You do not cross a picket line. That principle has won us many disputes and, in, frankly, makes us the envy of unions in other provinces where that isn't always the case. So I wanted to give you a special shout out and thank you for that solidarity. And this is, this is our primary purpose in unions, to advocate for workers, to raise their wages, gain benefits for them, to ensure those workers have a voice in the workplace, to force employers and sometimes multinational corporations to share their profits with the workers who are key to those companies making those profits. Unions are one of the ways we achieve equality in our society. Unions in and of themselves make the world a more equal place. And so it is absolutely critical that we extend the benefits of belonging to a union to more workers in this province. And to, yeah. and to do that, we have to do three things. Organize, organize, and organize. 
Uh, and we are working on that at the BC Fed. We are getting organizers together to learn from each other. We're having organizing seminars. We do a training for organizers at the CLC Winter School. And we've had some successes. I, I don't want to take a lot of your time to go through those successes. Um, and you are part of a number of them. But BCGEU, for example, at the River Rock Casino, they organized members there. And those members uh, got an average 19% increase. And in some cases, workers got a 54% increase. Um, and improvements to benefits and vacations. And, and the current casino fight is part of that effort to lift up what are very low wages in the casino industry. Some unions are organizing small workplaces. It is so difficult to organize uh, 10 member, 10 worker worksites, 12 member worksites. And the machinists are doing some really great work in that regard. I don't know whether Rob Ashton is still here, but a shout out to the ILWU who has redoubled their efforts in organizing, done some great work in organizing GCT planners. I know that Caitlin is in the audience was part of that. HEU reorganizing workers all the time in healthcare, and that's going to change once we get successorship language. Um, and, the, and the good fight uh, and the good win for SEIU at Capilano University, where they fought off a, a fight to be joined in with the CLAC cert. So they had a they had a very good uh, successful. And thank you to the Move Up members there who supported them. Uh, so we have to keep that up. We have to keep that up, and we're doing that at the Fed, helping people coordinate their organizing efforts, taking on some very nasty and questionable employer tactics, uh, and winning these fights on the ground. But not everyone has a union to fight for them. And until they do, we at the Fed, with your support, we have to be a voice for all workers. Uh, and I'm very proud of that culture at the Fed. It's been a culture that's been there for quite a long time. We have to use our resources to fight for decent wages and working conditions for everyone. And our best effort in that regard was the Fight for 15 campaign. And we won that campaign. We won that campaign because you, your union, other unions in this province supported that campaign. Put our money into working and fighting for non-union members because you signed petitions, because you showed up at our events, at SkyTrain stations and bus stops and malls and rallies, because you and other unions handed out our materials and talked to people at countless events in our communities. And because of all of that, we won the public support on this issue and the NDP committed to a $15 minimum wage and now we're seeing it implemented. Not as quickly as we want it to be. I've said that over and over again. It should have happened this year, years ago. But we are going to see a $15 minimum wage in this province. And when we do, hundreds of thousands of workers will have their wages lifted above the poverty line because of your efforts, because of the efforts of the labor movement in this province. This is our victory, and we should celebrate it. achieve a $15 minimum wage just because we worked hard. We did work hard. We worked incredibly hard. But that wasn't the only thing that got us there. We're going to get there because we engaged in political action and elected a government that shares our values. And you heard that from Pre Premier Morgan this morning. And I really want to again congratulate Move Up because you engage in politics at a very high and significant level. Move Up is one of the unions in this province that really understands and embraces the importance of political action. And David Black, for example, chairs our political action committee. Thank you for that. It's not always easy work, but it is a very, very important committee. David is there because we know he comes from the union that has that mindset that embraces political action. We can only win these better things with better governments. It's the only way we win them. We can make small gains with what I like to refer to as shithead governments, and I'm retiring soon so I can swear as much as I like. <laughs> but we, we, we can think of the steps of what we achieved and what we lost under 16 years of the Liberal government and what we are going to achieve with an NDP government. It is 
The gap is so wide you can hardly imagine it. We have had 16 years of an anti-worker government. And then, so the sad news is there are a lot of things that need changing. But we're gonna work on all of them. We want them all, right? Uh, we want better employment standards, including sick leave for all workers and leave for victims of domestic violence, as you heard about today. We need strong rules around health and safe, healthy and safe workplaces, both on the prevention and compensation side. We need fairer and better processes about organizing. And I understand you've already talked about the review of the Labour Code, and there are some good changes coming. The review did some made some good recommendations. There are some holes. We'll be talking to the Labour Minister about that. Are you out there, Labour Minister? He was here before. Um, we'll be talking to the Labour Minister about that and pushing the government to implement those, some of the very good recommendations from that review, but also go further uh, in some areas where it didn't go far enough. We need to fix the trades and apprenticeship system. You heard the Premier talking about that. The Liberals did enormous damage to that, and we need to ensure that the next generation of workers in BC has access to those good jobs, and that a more diverse group of people have access to those jobs. Women, Indigenous people, persons with disabilities, persons of color, all have access to jobs that have not been very open to them in the past. We'll be campaigning on all of these things. It's a bit more complicated than the simple Fight for 15 campaign, but for too many years, the playing field has been tilted in favor of employers, and it's time to level the playing field for workers and make sure they get a fair deal. But that's not all, because we also have to engage with the public and government on the broader social issues important to working people in this province. We need a comprehensive poverty reduction plan. We need a $10 a day child care uh, plan, and we're on the way to those things. We need uh, pay equity legislation everywhere, federally and provincially. We need a national pharma care program, and thank you for that wonderful debate and stories on that and your commitment to achieving that. These are all things we have to continue to fight for because they're important to working people, they're important to every single citizen of our country. We have lots of work to do, and we'll need your help. Um, but we are in an amazing time in the labor movement in this province. It is truly a time of hope and optimism. Finally, after 16 years of government under Gordon Campbell and Christy Clark, we have a government under John Morgan that shares our values. It's up to us to take advantage of that political climate that we find ourselves in. It's up to us to make sure that our goal of decent work, good wages, benefits, and rights at work for all workers takes a giant leap forward and that we make progress on new social programs. I know you're here because you share that dream. You're committed to that work. We're all here to engage in the fight for equality and justice, and that's what we're going to do over the next few years. We are going to make this province a better place for workers, a better place for your members, a better place for everyone. Thank you so much.